we have a medical thing that needs to be treated. And once we're treated, we're back in the field and ready to go. In a tweet storm last July, President Trump announced a blanket ban on transgender people serving in the military. It was a sharp reversal from Obama administration policy, which allowed trans people to serve openly for the first time and required the Pentagon to pay for transitions. The Trump administration eventually issued a memo formalizing the president's tweets and setting last Friday as the deadline for producing actual guidelines to implement the ban. Those guidelines are now public, and they're anything but coherent policy. The memo Trump signed basically endorses recommendations made by Defense Secretary James Mattis after he convened a, quote, panel of experts to review available data and research on the issue. Mattis wrote in his recommendation that there are, quote, substantial risks to letting some transgender people serve in the military. And I talked to Blake Dreeman, an active duty Navy lieutenant commander who's also transgender, about that. We're already here. We're already doing the job. We're already deployed. We're already uh, writing contracts, being in the infantry, um, out in the field, doing our jobs every single day with no demonstrable impact on any sort of readiness or unit cohesion. We have a medical thing that needs to be treated. And once we're treated, we're back in the field and ready to go. Matt has signed off on a handful of policy changes, most of which hinge on a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, a conflict between your physical gender and the gender you identify as. The policy carves out an exemption for a small group of people who happen to get in at the right time. Transgender military personnel who were receiving medical treatment for gender dysphoria, in other words, transitioning to the gender they identify as, before this new policy change. They can continue serving and they can continue with their transition. For everyone else, it's a different story. If you've been diagnosed with gender dysphoria after joining up, but aren't yet getting treatment, you can still serve, but you won't be allowed to transition. If you were diagnosed with gender dysphoria before trying to enlist, you're banned. Unless you've been, quote, stable in the sex you were born as for three years. So if you've been living as the gender you identify as, you can't enlist. The biggest change for future recruits it bars any transgender people who have undergone gender confirmation surgery in the past, or plan to in the future, from enlisting. But this policy isn't going into effect anytime soon, because it was already blocked in the courts after a handful of LGBTQ rights organizations challenged the proposal following Trump's tweets. But Blake told me that doesn't mean transgender people currently serving aren't feeling the effects of this administration's 180. A lot of our soldiers and sailors, airmen and Marines have been confused as to, okay, am I gonna get med boarded? Am I gonna get kicked out? And so we've had to go back and do a lot of education uh, with our own service members that know this memorandum grants you, or recommends that you be grandfathered in and that you should be safe. Now, if you haven't come out or you're still in the closet, I recommend that you make that decision one way or the other fairly fast because the moment that policy is in place, um, and the court injunctions are lifted, then you risk, your, you risk your career by coming out. Why do you want to serve in an organization that just put forth sort of a policy paper saying that they don't think you're fit to serve or that you're not helpful to the organization? This country is bigger than that view. Our calling is to serve the nation. And the nation is bigger than the small subset that would wish us uh, to not serve.